Welcome to Beauty and the Biz. Discover how to grow your practice with effective cosmetic patient attraction, conversion, and retention advice from author, speaker, trainer, and cosmetic practice business and marketing coach, Catherine Maley, MBA. Hello, and welcome to Beauty and the Biz, where we talk about the business and marketing side of plastic surgery. I'm your host, Catherine Maley, author of Your Aesthetic Practice, What Your Patients Are Saying, and consultant to plastic surgeons to get them more patients and more profits. Now, in this podcast episode, I'm calling it How to Do a Cosmetic Surgery Patient Webinar because it's getting more difficult to grab and hold the attention of new prospective patients, so try something different. Since consumers today are used to getting their information in longer webinar format online, a patient webinar makes sense when you have important educational content to cover, especially with visual images. Now, I've personally worked with surgeons on their own patient webinars that have brought in up to 100 grand during the event and then much more later because they're so memorable. So listen as I walk through the steps to a successful and profitable online event. Enjoy and I'll be back at the end. If you're looking for a plastic surgery marketing strategy that's working now to reach new patients to fill your surgery schedule, a patient webinar makes sense. We're gonna look at what a webinar can do for you to grow your practice, as well as a checklist of webinar best practices. So what are the benefits of a patient webinar? There are a lot of them. So online learning is growing like crazy. With so many consumers working at home and meeting online virtually, a patient webinar just makes sense to use as a lead generation tool. Now, consumers today are used to getting their information in longer webinar format. So this media channel works well when you have important educational content to cover, especially with visual images. So it's the one to many format. So think of it as a cosmetic consultation for a group that reaches so many more prospective patients in the least amount of time. That's leverage. Patient webinars can also be a revenue generating event worth many thousands of dollars to you when done right. So you solidify relationships with your current patients and you're also introduced to new prospective patients they invite through the, your marketing efforts and their marketing efforts. Now the attendees can spread the word about your webinar to their social media channels, giving you even more exposure to new patients. It also solidifies your brand to help prospective aesthetic patients remember you when they're ready for cosmetic enhancement, even months or years later. So let's now go through a patient webinar checklist to ensure you have a successful and profitable patient webinar. First, choose a theme. Now it's vital you get this right since the title of your webinar will determine the interest level for consumers to attend. I suggest picking one body part or one procedure versus presenting this laundry list of your services. It's just too generic. You want to approach this from an educational point of view. For example, which would you rather attend? The ABCs of cosmetic rejuvenation or tummy tuck talk? <laughs> the tummy tuck talk wins hands down because it's specific, it's focused, and you're talking to a very specific audience who's interested in a tummy tuck. Next is your marketing message. Now you need very good reasons why these patients and the public want to attend your webinar. It's got to be interesting to grab their attention. So fill up your message with benefits they care about. For example, discover how a tummy tuck gives you back your pre-baby body with less downtime, less scarring, less cost. <laughs> Let them know before and after photos will be shown. They'll hear from actual patients who have had a tummy tuck and special pricing will be offered to the webinar attendees. Encourage them to invite their friends and share the webinar details on their social media platforms since all are welcomed. Now, you have to market your patient webinar. It takes a lot of marketing effort and repetition to spread the word so everyone knows about your patient webinar. Now that's gonna include all sorts of things like email invite to your current patient list, in-house signage, 
on hold messaging, social media posts, website banners, text messages, and social media advertising. And be sure to invite those prospective patients who came in for a consult but never booked, or even long lost patients who would be interested in reconnecting with you. You also need to choose a webinar platform. Now the two most popular online platforms are zoom.us or gotomeeting.com. What I love about both of these platforms is you have cons um, the consumers register for their webinar by giving you their name, email, and cell phone for text reminders. So you're building your list. Then the platform will automatically send out reminders, which I highly recommend because it's tough to get people there. Technical glitches are common, so be sure you pick one platform and practice with dry runs to ensure all goes well when you're live. Now this webinar needs to be audio and visual so attendees can see you and the results of your great work. So what's the webinar agenda? Keep it simple and show lots of social proof so the attendees can see your skill and expertise. And there must be a compelling reason for the attendees to do something after they watch the webinar. So that's the whole point, to give them the information they need and social proof they need to move forward with their own surgical procedure. So think of it as a typical surgical consultation you have regularly. For example, let's say you're doing a weekend facelift webinar. The agenda would go as follows. Your patient coordinator welcomes the attendees and introduces you and credentials you as the surgeon is as the best choice. Now you, the surgeon, you talk about the aging process, what is the weekend facelift, FAQs for the weekend facelift, lots of before and after photos of the weekend facelift, a live patient story testimonial from a weekend facelift patient, and now your patient coordinator offers special pricing for attending that webinar and encouraging the webinar attendee to call the office or DM you or email you to schedule their own consult. And now you open up the webinar for Q&A so the attendees can interact with you, the surgeon, directly. So the length of your webinar depends on attendee interaction. It's much more important you use your time to answer their questions than go on and on and on about the technical aspects of the procedure. Now it should take you about 20 to 30 minutes to present and show and tell before and after photos while explaining the patient's concerns and their stories and their outcomes. Then open it up to questions and have your coordinator read the questions to you. Now regarding the special pricing, if you normally charge a consultation fee, you can actually offer a complimentary since they attended your webinar. You can also try a $250 gift card towards a weekend facelift, again, because they attended your webinar. Now regarding your webinar slides, you want to design PowerPoint slides to strengthen and emphasize the points you intend to make in your script. But it should not be the script itself with just words on a slide. Back up your points with as much social proof evidence as humanly possible and make it entertaining. Remember, your audience will either be looking at you or looking at your slides. So give them something interesting to look at. And here are a couple of tips. Be sure your logo and website address are on every slide just in case attendees come and go throughout your presentation and then they can check out your website to learn more. And you want this webinar to live on for months or years so do not refer to anything that dates it. Keep it date neutral. <laughs> and lastly, there's post webinar follow up. Now you did the hard part. You did the webinar and now you want to go one step further and follow up with the attendees. Now, since the attendees registered and gave you their contact information, you can send them an email thanking them for attending and reminding them of the webinar special pricing. Your coordinator can call the attendees to get their feedback and offer to schedule a consultation that's complimentary. You can use the same marketing channels you use to invite people to now send out the webinar replay so they can watch it again, forward it to their friends, and comment on it in social media. As you can see, patient webinars take time and effort, but can be an excellent way to attract new patients to you, as well as current patients who want that weekend facelift now that they know more. So now that you know the ins and outs of a patient webinar, do you feel inclined to do your own? I hope so, because it can be an asset that continues to give back for years. But like anything else worth doing, it takes time and effort, so you decide.
Okay, that wraps it up for me today, and I sure would appreciate you subscribing to Beauty in the Biz and leaving a review if you feel so inclined. And of course, if you've got any feedback or questions for me, feel free to leave them on my website at katherinemailey.com, or you can certainly DM me on Instagram at MBA. Thanks so much, and we'll talk again soon. We hope you found valuable insight on this episode of Beauty in the Biz. For more episodes, tools, and Catherine's free book, visit www.catherinemailey.com. That's www.c-a-t-h-e-r-i-n-e-m-a-l-e-y.com. And be sure to subscribe to get the latest practice building strategies delivered to you. And don't forget to share this Beauty in the Biz podcast with your staff and colleagues.